Hello everyone, welcome to the live for today. Let me know if anything's working, anything's not working, like my my volume or anything like that. I'll just have the stream open here as well so I can just check. But yeah, how are you guys going? It's start of term two now, you're probably a week, week and a half in. Hopefully it's been good so far. <clears throat> okay, I'll just have my live open here. Oh, we'll wait a couple minutes. We'll see if some more people join and then we'll get started. More formal. But yeah, let me know how you guys are going. And I'll pop the Google form in the chat, actually. I'll grab it. <clears throat> Give me a sec. I'll pop it in the chat here. Yeah, so if you guys have any feedback, any topics you'd like me to cover, please just fill it in. I, I'll check the Google form. So anything you want to tell me, leave it there and I'll be sure to look at it. And if you have more direct questions, you can message me on Instagram, send me an email or leave a comment on YouTube many different ways we'll give it a couple more minutes maybe 8.05 so there's a bit of a shorter session just on how to prepare for the various English sacks <clears throat> And yeah, as always, any questions you have, feel free to pop it in the chat and I will endeavor to answer them. One more minute and then we'll get started. Ooh. I think you guys will have a couple English sacks, maybe two this term. I think that's the way my school ran it. But yeah, this term, if you're in year 12, a lot of the sacks will pick up a bit. You'll probably have weeks where you might have two a week or a bit of a tougher schedule. All right, let's get started then. So today's topic is how to prepare for your English sacks. I will give you a, a general strategy to follow, like like sort of steps that I, I followed in my English preparation process. And then we'll talk a little bit about what may be a bit different if you're preparing for argument analysis or comparative or some of the other more specific sacks. All right, a couple updates before we get started. First update, timestamps for the last video are out. So you guys are probably studying English, which is why you're here watching this. So the last video was on argument analysis. And so I made timestamps of when I cover sort of each tip, each piece of advice. So feel free to use that to navigate the video later on in the year or if you haven't seen it yet. Google form, like I said, any suggestions or feedback you have, please put it into the Google form. With your Google form, there's a question in there which asks for please list three things that you've learned. So I think it'll be quite useful for you guys if you put really three specific things like I need to implement more how in my analysis rather than like I learned how to analyze. You should try and put something specific. You'll remember it a lot better and it's just more useful. That's That was the next point. And for timestamps, if someone, if I get a lot of questions at one point in time, 
if someone is able to list down the questions that I wrote, I would appreciate that and send it to me afterwards. I'm pretty okay with doing the timestamps for each of the tips, but sometimes in the Q&A sessions like I have here, it would be nice if I could list the questions more specifically, but it's a bit hard for me to coordinate with the live. So if you know someone does that, I would really appreciate that. And the final update I have for you guys is that I will be speaking at this event called ElseCon 2023 um, in, 2000, <laughs> in 2023. On the 3rd of May, the whole event goes for 10 to 2. There are some small breaks in between. These are all the speakers speaking. So you might know some of the people there. Um, so Dr. Beck, Hanor, Shiv, um, me, and Dr. Matt and Dr. Mike. And this is the link to sign up if you guys would like to go. So it's targeted towards med nursing students or people who want to go into those courses and also I think it's pretty applicable for uni students as well. I'll be speaking at 11 10 a.m. and just giving some very specific couple tips for like med school for uni but everyone has their own topics. I think it should be released if you can find it but if you're curious yeah send me a message. Anyway let's jump into what you guys are here for today which is <clears throat> which is how to prepare for your English sacs. So first off, why am I covering this topic? I have get a lot of questions and I message people myself when I was in year 12 about like how do I prepare for this particular SAC or how do I prepare for the end of year exam? And so I thought I'd go into depth about that and just have a video on it so you guys can refer to it as well. This is also a topic that's a little harder for teachers to teach. Usually you get a lot of content from your tutors, from your teachers, but because your teachers like didn't sit they're not really sitting your sacks in exams like they have they have really good knowledge of the text and some of them know the um, know the pieces and know how to prepare quite well but not it's been a while since they've probably had to sit exams the other reason is that my school had a good system like reflecting back I developed my system from what my school told me to do and they were quite organized they have a history of doing well in English so that helped a lot but other schools may not be as fortunate, so hopefully this can help you guys out. And honestly, this is something I struggled with as well. So for the end of your exam, there's a lot of time. I had like a good couple of weeks of no school, just preparation. And I was like, what the heck do I do during this time to ensure I'm really well prepared? So hopefully this can help you guys out with the SAC side of things. Okay, and I'm trying to give you guys an approach that you can apply, both if you're doing well right now. So if you're scoring how you want to score, if you did well in year 11, you're scoring well now, this is an approach you can follow, but I also add some little points that you would want to adopt if you're not doing as well as you would like, but you want to achieve a higher score for your SAC. And hey, you know, thanks for joining. All right, with the structure of today's video, it's <clears throat> quite a shorter one. Honestly, so I'm pretty open to questions if we get through it pretty quickly. But essentially, I'll give you a general timeline approach in very, very soon, and then some little pointers about each of the individual SACs. And the biggest piece of advice I have for English, I'm just going to give that to you guys now. So, like, this is literally the key to doing well in English. I'll give you the specific steps in a bit later, but you need to keep handing in work and taking on feedback from your teacher until you're receiving the marks you want. They're the ones marking your sacks, at least, maybe a little different for the exam, but this is literally how you do well. People ask me, like, very generally, how do I do well? How do I score a 10? You just keep writing and keep taking on feedback from your teacher until you're getting 10s from your teacher. And that's that's literally it in English. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Really try and keep that in mind, okay? Simplify things for yourself. Jonathan just did the creative. How'd you go? Hope, congrats on completing it. All right, let's go into the structure then. So this is where the money is. My approach and it is this. So have a look at it. You can take a screenshot if you'd like. I will go into detail. This will be on many of the following slides as well. So hopefully you will remember it pretty well. And something I did in school as well, like when you learn something, try and remember it or try and understand it as you go. So hopefully like each slide I go through, try and think in your mind, okay, what were the steps? What was the first step, second step, third step, whatever. So these are the literal steps that I took and my school recommended me to take to do well in English. We'll go through each one. This looks deceptively simple. I, I don't know how it looks to you guys, but it, it looks fairly simple to me. Like it looks like this is this step. I do this and I do the next step. I do this and then I get a good mark, right? It sounds pretty easy. But 
many people don't do each step. You probably know people who don't read the text. You may have procrastinated reading the text a bit. Homework essays, some people might not do homework essays. Timed essays, because they're often not homework, right? Your teacher doesn't necessarily say to you, hey, I want you to do three timed essays before your sack. They might set a certain one before the actual sack, but you might do a lot, people generally do a lot less than I would perhaps recommend. And planning, some people don't even plan. So already not everyone does every step, and then to do every step well, to know what you're trying to get out of each step is another thing altogether, and which I will talk about as well. But this is sort of the, the master plan, I guess. Um, and the last point I would like to make about these steps is that they should flow into each one. So I'm not saying like learn the text first, finish learning the text completely, now write some body paragraphs. Finish with those body paragraphs. Okay, done, homework essays. You can mingle with them a bit, but overall, this is how the structure I followed. It kind of flowed into each other. Learn the text particularly comes through a lot through the other steps. So as you write homework essays, as you write timed essays, you will learn a little bit more of the text, but the bulk of it happens first. So this is the general order, but it does mix a bit. It does flow a bit into each one. Ari, great question. I'll answer that in a little bit. All right, let's talk about step one, which is learn the text. Okay, so think to yourself, right? what was step one? Learn the text. Why is it step one? Because it's pretty obvious, right? You don't know the text at all. So this is a step that occurs throughout the entire year, like I mentioned. The bulk of it happens when you read and when you go through it in class. So firstly, when you read, read your text, circle interesting quotes. You probably should have done this by now. Um, your comparative and text, and text response probably should have read it. If you haven't, try and do it soon. For movies, make timestamps, okay? And, okay, the formatting is a bit weird for this one. But particularly for text response, ensure you know the text very well, okay? Because text response is... I'll talk about this a little later, but you may be a bit worried about you know, topics coming up that you're not certain about. But if you know the entire text for text response, there's nothing else they can really ask you about. If you know the entire text, and for me, my play was, I have it there, is the Women of Troy. I knew like this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And I knew my thoughts on each of those moments. So for, I don't know if you guys do Women of Troy, but for Talthibius, I could use it for a bravery topic. I could use him sort of similar examples to illustrate how um, not just the losers lose in war, but the winners lose as well. But if you know the text to that extent, and if you learned it that well, then there's not much you should be afraid of in the actual stack. Because even if a completely new topic comes up, you have to come up with three par paragraphs somehow. And if you know you know the text, you know that the three paragraphs are in there, you just have to find them. Whereas if you don't know the text, then like, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> not ideal. So yes, learn the text, follow along well with the teacher. If you have a good school, make sure you're listening well. Um, taking on the teacher's contention. So sometimes you might think a certain way about a text, but because your teacher's the one correcting it, and if you go to a good school, then their contention is kind of the right one, the one that's most supported by evidence and quotes. So really consider what they say. If you don't have as great of an environment around you, then you know look to older students, um, have a look online as well. And I think the best way is probably to message someone who did well with the text that you studied and ask them their thoughts on certain moments. Do I recommend being ahead of my uh, of your class? That's from Kanjiro. So that would, if you're talking about English, by being ahead, then I would recommend you like sort of get started on these tasks a little earlier maybe than when teachers recommend. So start timed essays a little earlier and then, then maybe, so if your teacher, your teacher might give you a timed essay like a couple of days before the actual sack for the class. They'll just say, we're going to do this in class. So I recommend starting that a bit earlier. In terms of being ahead for other subjects, if you want to do well in it and you feel like you're someone who needs to sit with tasks for a bit, then definitely, yeah, be ahead a little bit. All right, so that's it with learning the text. Think about step two. What's step two? Step two is practice body paragraphs. So writing, practice body paragraphs. So the purpose of these is exploratory in the sense that you're getting a bit of a feel for the text. You know the text in terms of theory, so the analysis, the writing, but now you're sort of writing and you want to actually put that down into words and see if you can phrase things well. This is also useful for getting a feel for the style of writing for each section. So each section is a bit different, the way you write a body paragraph, the way you construct it in terms of structure, especially argument analysis. If you haven't done it in a year, doing it again is a bit, makes it a bit difficult. So that would be something I would recommend. So this is why you do practice body paragraphs. So for each of these steps, you want to think about why you're doing it. 
And that way, like, if you're bad at something, you know what to do. And what to actually do, um, I recommend and what I did is sort of one to two body paragraphs, usually assigned by my teacher, but just on like very likely topics. So if your thing, if your play, the heavy theme of your play is patriarchy, then you might do a paragraph on patriarchy. Or if it's about war, you might do a paragraph on war. Just really easy stuff. Don't go for very niche topics. Just exploring and getting into the flow of analysis. And when you analyze, because the theme is the really big one, try and pick important moments of the play of the text of the movie as well, just so you, you can get a feel for analyzing them a little bit. Text for learning, tips for learning the text for a novel, novel or memoir. I think if we go back to learning the text, it's the similar advice that I've given for these. Like it's no different from a movie or from any other play or anything like that. Yeah. But I think, um, apart from the stuff I've said, maybe also look into context as well. That's important for some texts. So why the author wrote it, was it during a period of war? So they write an anti-war play memoir, like the person might be reflecting back on a certain period in their life, what are their circumstances? So maybe going a bit of de into depth about that as well. All right. Now we go into step three, <clears throat> which is homework essay. Okay. Homework essays is really important. Uh, when you recommend essay plans, we'll get into that when we get to essay plans in a couple of slides. So homework essays is the really heavy lifting part. These are really important. Like, hmm. I don't want to say one step is more important than the other, but if I had to, homework essays are the most important. Okay. Because this is where you build and solidify your knowledge of the text. This is where you analyze everything, where you look at basically the entire text, analyze all the moments you might want to use in the exam, write down all the analysis you might need to need, might need to write. And this is also where you receive a lot of feedback from your teacher because each one you receive feedback from your teacher. But highly important, like I really want to stress that with you guys, when you write your homework essays, and I've said this in the past as well, if you've seen my previous videos, you want to make sure it's the best possible piece of writing you can produce at that point in time. If you don't spend effort on anything else, spend effort on your homework essays, because that way the feedback you get lifts up your ceiling of writing. You get a little better, you know exactly what to improve on. Whereas if you put in a lackluster effort, then the feedback you give is not, you get, you, you're going to get is not going to be very important because it's probably stuff you just neglected. So you want to write a few essays. You want to be smart because homework essays take time. They take effort. You want to write ones that cover the main themes of the text and not all on the same theme. So write a really lengthy, exploring, in-depth uh, uh, essay on destruction. Okay. And then write one on patriarchy and then write one on hope. So three distinct, but very important themes. Try and cover most of the play as well, or of the text, just so your teacher really sees your analysis for each of those uh, moments and you understand each of those moments as well because if you've used them in practice you'll be much more confident using them in saxon exams but once again really important be diligent in, in picking your moments and quotes the quotes you pick tomorrow night in your homework essay are probably the ones you're going to be using in your sac and your exams so be very smart about them pick the ones you're very confident putting down on the page in your assessment okay very important step Yes, I did study at Macbeth, draw zip in year 10. Oh, was it year 10? Might have been year 9, actually. Yeah, I think I studied Macbeth in year 9. Okay. Step 4, timed essays. So you've done, we'll recap it slightly. So you've learned the text. You've written one or two body paragraphs. You've written a lot of, oh, not a lot, but like three, perhaps, really strong homework essays, received detailed feedback, really lifted up the level of your analysis. Now it's getting a bit closer to the SAC, okay? And you want to mention timing. SAC timing is a little better than exam timing. When exam comes, you really want to be hitting those times and practicing a lot. I'll talk about that later on in the year. But timed essays are mostly for timing, okay? Not for improving the ceiling of your analysis or for exploring new moments. Because you're not going to... You're meant to do timed essays under SAC and exam conditions. So you shouldn't be exploring new moments. You might be writing a moment you didn't go in that much depth in, but you shouldn't be exploring new moments because you don't, you don't know them that well. This is literally, like I said, to perfectly imitate exam and SAC conditions. You want to be very, very... Perfectionist is not a good word, but very, very obsessive over that. So have your timer, practice reading time, practice um, writing time, have it set exactly like your SAC and exam, have all your materials there, no play next to you. That way, when you go into the SAC, it's just another Tuesday, right? You did it 
yesterday, you did it a week ago, it's just another assessment. You practice everything that you've practiced at home. You're just executing. But that's really important. If you don't do this, then when you get into the sack, you're like, oh, what do I do? Like, oh, reading time, never done reading time before. What should I do? So you really wanna make sure that you imitate those conditions very, very well. The other thing you should be doing is to develop timings that you will follow. So I literally knew how much time I would spend on each body paragraph. So if I had an hour, I would spend 10 minutes on the intro, five minutes on the conclusion, 45 minutes left, so 15 minutes on each of the body paragraphs. I have reasons for those times, right? I want 10 minutes on the intro because, and not 10 minutes on the conclusion, so 10 intro, five conclusion, not the other way around, because I don't want to start off on the back foot. <clears throat> if you start off on the back foot, it's really, really annoying. I want to be ahead of time rather than behind. Okay, and I stuck to those timings rigidly. Don't give yourself any breathing room. Uh, as in like, don't, don't let yourself get behind on time. So timed essays are really useful for practicing those exam skills, those SAC skills, and make sure you're using them for that purpose. Some people ask me like, should I do a bunch of timed essays? And they're not really happy with the marks they're getting. If you're not happy with the marks you're getting, you should do some like homework essays. Make sure that quality is good and then work on doing it under time conditions. Hope that makes sense. Let's have a look at some of the questions. Good evening, Angela. Okay, I'll answer some of these questions in a bit. Dandelion, hello. Welcome to the live. Oh, did you know ask a question? I didn't see. Oh, what well, watch did you have on for your exams? Oh, I have it. I'll grab it at the end of the live, I will show you guys. This is a nice question. I used it for my um, practice sacks and exams as well. Well, um, once we're done with the sort of this general plan, before I get into the specific texts, uh, specific sacks, I will answer some of your questions. All right, so timed essays. Now you're done with, done with your timed essays, okay? So if you think about where you are in terms of your preparation, you've done a lot of practice, you know the text well, you've done time practice, the quality of your analysis is good, you're happy with it, and you're writing well under time conditions, getting the scores you want. Now, what are you really worried about? And the main thing I was worried about was that I'd get a random topic that I didn't really know. I think that's a very real fear for most people throughout all of English, okay? And you plan to cover all your bases. And planning is more efficient, right? You wouldn't do timed essays to cover all your bases. That's kind of dumb because all you really need to know is, can I write on this topic? You don't really actually need to write every little piece of analysis out. And timed essays aren't good for that purpose. So once again, What's the purpose of each of these steps? Very, very important. Okay. For planning, it's very useful to complete with friends. Just hop on a call with a couple friends. It's good to brainstorm different ideas together. Have a Google Doc open. Topic in the left. I'll show you an example, but I'll show you now. So this is basically what I had, a master document <clears throat> with some of my friends. Shout out to them. The topic or the theme on the left, the body paragraphs on the right. Okay. I will come back to this slide. So like, don't stress out too much about it. But essentially, that's kind of the structure. <clears throat> In terms of what you actually write, it depends on you, right? So my friends and I were quite good at English. So we didn't need to write down too much. We just needed to come up with the ideas that we wanted to have. And we kind of knew what we would write. So the topic sentences kind of, but sort of just the main ideas, right? So the importance of artfully maintaining a balance, the idea, that probably wouldn't be my exact topic sentence, but the general idea of the paragraph and um, some moments that you might want to use as well. If you're, less sure about what you want to write, you really want to make sure you know exactly what you would write for that essay. So for us, just writing this amount was enough. If you want to write more, put in some more quotes, put in some you know proper topic sentences, put in your contention more more completely, but just to ensure that you, you can really truly write on this topic. You really want to make sure that's the case. And I just saw a piece of good news. Uh, King Tate scored an A on their argument, on, your, on their analysis essay. Um, on Women of Troy. Congratulations. That's a very good result. Keep it up. All right. You can have multiple plans for one topic. What I mean by that is, as you can see, you're not going to write five body paragraphs in this is for comparative, but you can have alternative body paragraphs because your topic on the day is not going to be a perfect fit for your plan. So I just sort of had different ideas I could take, different strategies. And yeah, some of the you know, immediate quotes I immediately thought of, I'll write down. But essentially, plan with friends write down as much as you need so that you feel very confident with the topic. And the purpose of planning is to cover all your bases. 
All right, before we dive into the specific topics, I will answer some questions. So let me hop to the question. <clears throat> So from Annie, do you have any tips for analytical text essay about To Kill a Mockingbird? I studied To Kill a Mockingbird a very long time ago. I can't give you any specific advice because I don't remember it that well. I remember the plot, but not, not well enough to give good advice. So just follow along with everything I've said with general analysis, like sort of that preparation approach. Um, plus, plus in like past videos, if you check out some of my text response videos, it goes in a bit more depth about like specifically how to analyze or how to write um, or like what a good essay looks like, how to write an intro. So just take on some of those tips. Uh, but yeah, this structure should help you decently. Bianco, what are your thoughts on people memorizing essays and using them? So, hmm. That's a good question. My thought, my thinking is that like, I don't know. I feel like generally, if you can write a really good homework essay, you should be able to write a decent essay in the moment. I, I'll tell you my approach first, just so it's a bit easier. So I'd never memorized anything. What I did do though, was I spent, because I spent so much time on the five steps, as I'll show you guys, these five steps, right? Because I spent so much time on each of these five steps, on the homework essays, on finding per like really good moments, really good quotes. You sort of remember them. So and planning and timed essays, it's so you repeat those moments, the same key moments so much that it sticks in my head and I could write it out pretty fluently. And I probably used it enough that the sentences are pretty similar each time as well. So I know essentially what quotes I, I'm gonna write and how the analysis is going to be. So I didn't memorize anything. Sometimes I would like write timed body paragraphs as well. So I'd just be like, okay, if I had to write, analyze this moment, what would I write? Write it all out, see if I'm happy with it. I think if you do this, you shouldn't need to memorize anything. I think if you find some things a bit hard, some moments a bit more iffy, then you might want to memorize it specifically. But generally, I think people who memorize, like I know high achievers who memorize it, this makes this question a bit harder. But I think if you memorize things, it kind of means that you can't write that well, but like you somehow had a really good homework essay. So you probably got analysis from, you know, perhaps tutors, teachers, but you don't completely understand the analysis, right? It's not completely yours yet, which is why you have to memorize it because you couldn't really produce it on the spot, if that sort of makes sense. The other dangers of the memorization are if you like memorize it very strictly word for word and you forget a word, people get really stressed, right? Oh, what, what word? I forgot the um, synonym that I was going to use for like atrocious and everything like goes really badly. And also makes you un inflexible as well. It's really hard um, writing to topic as it is already. So if you memorize something and you really want to shift it to topic, that makes it even harder. And I think it makes people overly rely. So I would advise you to this early on in the year. And if you don't have a sack coming up immediately, try and go with the strategy I'm telling you. Try and put it into your long-term memory. Try and understand the analysis and develop your writing skills rather than sort of trying to hack it and write, write like well, like falsely well, I guess, and then memorizing it for the exam or SAC. Hope that helps. Bit of a long answer. Uh, she was white. Is that an alliteration? It's pretty bad alliteration, but I guess it is if you have nothing else to talk about. And I am not sure why that doesn't seem like a significant quote, but like literally alliteration, if you have two words that start similarly, then yeah. What watch? I... We'll grab my watch at the end, I think. Is this outside? It's a bit annoying to get. And when you start applying to the universities, you start applying, I think, before you... Oh, I don't remember, actually. Your school should remind you, but you apply to uni, and then you sit your exams, and then they, like... And then I think after you sit your exams, you can edit your uni choices. I'm fairly sure. But yeah, check with your school. They'd be much better on that. Oh, Mildew, almost missed the live. No worries, you're here now. And these are recorded as well. I really prefer you guys coming in person. It's just nice chatting to you guys. And if you have questions, you can ask me. And and like in university, I prefer watching things live because I probably won't watch it later unless I really like the lecture. Catherine, for so Catherine asks, for the essay, how much of the analysis should be general? How much should be your own interpretation? So I don't think you should split general in your own interpretation. As in like, 
what does general analysis mean? What I, yeah, like, your own interpretation should be based in the text, which should be the similar analysis to what other people and what your teacher has told you. But in terms of analysis, you kind of have the quote. You analyze it specifically in terms of like, here we have alliteration of blah, 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 which illustrates how white the person is. Hence, the author is highlighting how racial um, diversity was not present in this society, blah, blah, blah. So you have the quote, specific analysis of the quote, and then you can draw out to the bigger idea. Oh, YDD, I didn't see your one. Could I get tips to enjoy English more? It's just discipline when I write numerous essays. What do you mean by discipline? As in like you're, you're not, you don't want to write numerous essays or, or like you, you can't bring yourself to write a lot of essays. I think take things like never think too much ahead. Don't think to yourself, this is for year 12 as well. Don't think to yourself, oh, I want to do like 30 exams these holidays. I think just the thought of that is very draining. Just focus on tomorrow. So say today I'm going to you know write my homework essay. I want to improve a bit. So focus on the improvements. So last essay I did this well, but I want to add this a bit more. And I think having that focus motivates me a little bit because I want to get better. I want to add that more piece of feedback in. And also reading good essays was quite motivating as well. Uh, it's I guess it's kind of a bit of a false dopamine rush, but it's nice reading essays and seeing how you know well-written they are, seeing how fluent they are. And I find that can be quite motivating for me to write an essay as well, because I'm like, I want to do that as well. So I think for you, YDD, just really think about improving. Think about like, I may not want to do an essay today, but if I do, and if I improve a little bit, I'm going to, and I do this every day, even when I don't feel like it, I'm going to be improving quite a lot. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Mel, hello, welcome. Will there be a collab with Yevon Yang? Hopefully, uh, hopefully. I'm not at the same hospital as her now. But uh, I see her around a little bit, so hopefully there will be one. Has anyone got a Sunset Boulevard? Yeah, someone can help with that. All right, we'll go a little bit more into the specific text, and then we'll come back to your questions. There's not too much of the actual PowerPoint to go, so we'll have time for questions. All right, so go through the specific sacks. Creative is a little short. I'm pretty sure most of you should be done with your creatives. If you haven't, let me know in the chat because it's always interesting seeing how schools hold different different orders of events. So with the creative, learn, so essentially like what you would what I would add to what I've already said. So in this step, learn the text, which is step one. You would also want to consider the author's techniques in a bit more detail and also unique aspects of the characters. So how they speak, how they think, how they write. But as I've said, each school holds it very, very differently. I found for the creative, like some people will get them to add a little bit to the to the text at a hidden moment. Some people get them to write like a self-reflection while imitating the text, a bit of a weird one. But yeah, just really clarify with your school. Um, it's a bit more subjective perhaps than some of the other sacks. So just make sure you're communicating with your school a lot. And yeah, focus more on homework essays than timed essays. I didn't really find timed essays that, like I didn't really feel like time was a massive deal for me in the in the creative assessment. So like I did a couple timed essays, but not as much as I did for the other assessments. All right. Oh, you know, you haven't done creative. Okay. So have you done any English sacks yet? Or are you like perhaps not in year 12? All right. Text response. I haven't written much here because this is a very good section for you to literally carry out each step. As I mentioned, there's not much I need to add those five steps. So learning the text, writing body paragraphs, writing practice essays or homework essays, writing timed essays, planning. Literally, stepwise, following those, executing those well is a really good way to you know, ensure you can perform in the text response piece. And the other little piece of advice is like, if it's a movie, write down some timestamps and that would be sort of in the learning the text stage. All right, next argument analysis. I have a bit more to say here. Okay, so once again, these are the steps. All right, so I've put the steps there. These are things you would want to add on to those steps or or keep in mind when you're completing those steps. So when you're doing your practice body paragraphs, I also do recommend practicing intros a bit as well before you sort of put together the whole essay. Because if you've started argument analysis, you know the intro is a little odd. Like there are specific things you need to incorporate. Context, tone, um, contention. And so you want to make sure that structure is really good. Whereas for other pieces, it's kind of 
you know, you have the context and then your topic sentences. That's it. So you would want to put a bit of a more focus on argument analysis intros. Next, in the homework essay section, when you're working on your homework essays, rather than exploring the text, because you're not, the text is going to be different each time, it is useful. What, what the point of this homework essay here is so you're exposed to and analyze different techniques. You see statistics. You see people using sarcasm. You see people, you know, guilting the reader to do stuff. You see people uh, lifting up, uplifting people. You see people criticizing the government. These things repeat, but only if you try and expose yourself to a lot of pieces and try and analyze all of those things. Because you're going to, you, your statistics will probably be on your end of your exam. Seeing a call to action is probably going to be on your end of your exam. So exposing yourself to those and trying to analyze them now in your homework essays will help you a lot. And then in Saxon exams, you can pick out specific pieces of advice, uh, pieces of analysis and techniques you want to analyze. But you just want to make sure in your arsenal, you could analyze everything. And then you pick out what you actually want to analyze. Yeah, so there are a limited number of ways people can make their argument. So you really want to be exploring those, trying to analyze those in your homework essays. And my homework essays were quite long. If you, oh, you've probably seen, if, oh yeah, I have my argument analysis video out from like two years ago, I think, where I go through one of my pieces. So feel free to check that out. If someone has the link, you can pop it in the chat. That would be nice if you have the link so if you just search up argument analysis Darren Tan and it's one where I go through my piece okay timed essays the focus here is the same as any timed essay which is have a think about it what's the purpose of a timed essay it is to practice timings practice exam conditions okay another focus here is reading time is really important because reading time even in the exam most of my reading time is spent on argument analysis chunking so breaking down the piece writing the intro essentially so thinking about the contention during reading time and i would literally write out the intro in my head people have messaged me saying that i take too long writing the intro so i don't really know um so i like run out of time for other stuff i had that problem as well intros are really fidgety to write particularly for argument analysis because you're thinking like okay i want to put tone but i can't really write tone in, in a sentence by itself because it's a bit weird so if you do in reading time, you put you pair tone and contention together. You put your know, audience in a separate sentence. In your head, you've done that. Once writing time starts, boom, you hit it all out. You get started on a really good note. Okay, so reading time is important. And if you have a bit of time in reading time, then finding techniques. So this is why with timed essays, you practice reading time as well. You practice writing time as well because they are crucial steps. And with the end of your exam, as I'll talk about later in the year, I would actually... If I was just doing a text response, but I was preparing for the end of your exam, I would give myself, I forgot how long, but like maybe like three minutes reading time. So I would literally like really split it very finely. Again, for planning for argument analysis, this is actually a very crucial step for argument analysis, which may be surprising or may not. So what do you guys think I would be doing? Like, what do I mean by planning for argument analysis? Feel free to pop it in the chat. I'd be interested to hear your responses. But what does planning mean with argument analysis? And there's a bit of a lag. I think people have told me that in the Google form. So if I'm like staring at the screen for a while, you know why, but just a bit of a lag. Good, good. Thank you guys for contributing. Uh, so essentially everything you guys have said. So it's all of that. So it's kind of like writing the essay without writing the essay. So planning, <clears throat> practicing reading time, finding pieces and picking out techniques I'll be analyzing. So in my head, I'm like, this is my intro. This is my going to be my first body paragraph. These are the paragraphs that are going to be in there. These are some of the techniques I would pick out. Because this way, I sort of skip analyzing everything. Because at this point in time, planning, remember, is the last step, like towards the end. I knew my analysis was quite good. I was happy with how I could analyze stats. 
And once again, each step is important, right? So homework essays, I should be happy with the quality of my analysis. Timed essays, I'm pretty happy with me doing it in time. And I've received good feedback from my teacher. So me just an analyzing more probably wouldn't be a great use of my time. What I want to do is, you know, be exposed to some more techniques, some more contentions, making sure I can identify the contention, the tone, the audience, particularly the contention, because that's important for the whole piece um, in, in a very short time period. So planning is thinking about your entire essay without writing your piece. Like I said here, I practice planning a lot. I mean, it's good to do once you're confident in your analysis. And yeah, it saves time. So you, in my head, I'm like, okay, so, because argument analysis is a bit time pressured in terms of you needed to come up, come up with stuff. So I'm like, okay, I can do this quickly. That gives me confidence. That's the thing I'm worried about. And so through planning, I work on that and try and make it a bit better. So yeah, thanks uh, all your contributions. They're all, all what I would do. And the last slide, or not almost the last slide, but comparative. So comparative, all the other steps are pretty, uh, there's not much I really need to add there. But with homework essays, I think what moments you pick will be very, very important. So for comparative, I actually didn't write that many. I wrote the least number of practice essays for the actual SAC. And I didn't actually write many timed essays just because we didn't get that long on, on the comparative. And also we, we didn't get that long like to prepare for it. But the SAC itself was a pretty decent chunk. It was like an hour 30, so it wasn't too big of an issue. And I think we did one in class. Why is what moments you pick important? Well, because if you know everything in text response, you can write pretty well on the spot, right? You can pick out a moment here, pick out a moment there, you know your analysis. Even if you know comparative well, because it's two texts and you need to compare them, you need to also compare them in the actual SAC. So just because you know one well and you know the other well, it's hard to pair up moments you might know this moment well you might know this one well but if you haven't paired them up before it's really difficult to do so in the actual sack so you want to make sure you're picking out moments that you think are very compatible compatible that you think you might use in the second the exam and that's you know quite important so i had you know certain pairs i guess but like just because one moment goes with another one doesn't mean it can't go with a different moment just keep in mind that but i did have like pairs um that i would you know use and in the timed essays, maybe I had to try mixing two ones, two different ones together. And then after doing the timed essay, I'll review that. Um, just so I'd be prepared for the actual set. But yeah, so just with the homework essays, be a little more careful when you're picking on certain moments. All right, let's get into the questions then. Did SAC rankings ever motivate your work ethic? Mm, I would say I thought about them at times, but I don't think just generally like being rank one was that motivating for me because it doesn't mean much, right? It's the study score, it's the ATAR, and it's the getting better. Oh, look, ATAR motivated me quite a bit and the prospect of doing well, but looking back, I don't feel like, I feel like that should motivate you, but shouldn't be the main motivation. But yeah, just personally, SAC rankings, because it, didn't, because there were things that meant a bit more, it didn't really motivate me that much. But if I didn't do well, if I was ranked lower, I would use that in the short term. I'd be like, okay, I really need to work hard for the ne next sack, really knuckle down. So that happened for me in Latin and English. As I've said multiple times, you guys are probably sick of it. So yeah, it does motivate me in the short term, particularly if I'm not doing well. What pen made you write the fastest in the exam? I'll see if I have it actually, give me a sec. Yeah, this one here. Uh, it's a Sarasa dry. It's a bit of a weird. It's like a, one of those unboxing videos. So Sarasa dry pen. I think I just bought it at a shop once. Really liked it, and then ordered it online. It dries very quickly. Like you write, and then it's dry, and it flows very well. It's. I think it's just a nice thing to think about. Like it's. It's a nice. Obviously, it's not like as helpful as studying your text, but it's just a nice little, you know, break from your study. Like uh, finding a pen that you like. I think the, the gel ones are quite nice. The Ink Joy pens are nice as well. And Muji pens are really good um, as well. But they just smudge a little bit. Uh, but yeah, find what you like. And this is the pen I used. Last minute revision, things to do before. One, or, one to two days before. It depends for each sack. Um, mainly planning, I'll recommend. And just going over your moments a little bit. So planning, going over your moments. And also 
uh, what was it? Also, oh, for argument analysis, yeah, pla yeah, planning actually, that would be the main thing you'd be doing one to two days before, because you've sort of, if you follow this strategy, like I've said, like literally, if you do every step and you do it well, don't worry about what what marks you're getting like in between and stuff, but just if you follow these steps and these are things you can control, right? Learning the text and stuff. If you focus on those, then in the one to two days before the sack, you'll know what to do, kind of. And you'll probably you'll probably be planning. Yep, certain art in fluent writing. Good to hear, YDD. Uh, Alex, can you use a quote to start the intro and text response essay? You can. That's what I did. But I, I didn't always use a quote. I try to use a moment as well. So if you can't find the perfect quote, you can say like a moment. So like, as Achilles lies devastated, we are alerted to the um, destructive impacts that war can have. So something like that. So you don't always have to use a quote because sometimes you want to save quotes for later. But starting off with a moment is quite nice as well. Like a descriptive moment that you might see like at the beginning of a movie scene kind of. Okay, I had a term one. Yikes asks, hey Darren, have you done this for Lang 2? I will, not yet. If you check on my channel, I haven't done any Ing Lang lives yet, but I plan to. Good, structure, structure, structure. These, you guys answering the question, great. Catherine, for text response, if you have a different interpretation to your peers or teachers, quote, should you include in your essay if you can back it up with evidence? So think about what's my number one advice for English. It is to give things to your teacher and see if they're happy with it. Um, if your analysis is different and your teacher like thinks it's logical, then I think go for it. Um, but like they're, they're open to different interpretations if they're like good teachers, right? They shouldn't have a very strict interpretation. If your one is based in fact and fits in with the author's contention and context. I feel like the teacher should accept it. Um, but just, yeah, run, run that by your teacher, in my opinion. Uh, and for a singular quote, it doesn't matter like, too much what your analysis is. Some people say watching the news improves English, but I don't get how. I, yeah, look. I think things like that. So if you do a language, people have probably told you like watching TV shows or whatever. If you're, oh, actually, I guess that was okay. But I think watching the news probably helps if you did that from a young age. But in year 12, I think watch the news if you like it. But... If you're watching it to improve your English, probably better ways of doing that. Okay, from Avinesh, how did you ensure that the arguments you identified were specific and not too broad? And also, how did you decide to omit some evidence compared to others? So, a lot of these questions, if you follow each step, you will, like, you will come to the answer yourself. But, hmm, your arguments... Is it, I, I think you're talking about argument analysis here because you wouldn't... I think you're talking about argument analysis. Correct me if you're wrong. Uh, you wouldn't pick two broad arguments. Like, they don't... Like, arguments are meant to be broad. But they'd be a bit more specific than the contention. I, I hope that makes sense. But it's easy if you have a text that you can show me. Um, how do I decide to omit some evidence compared to others? So this comes through as you follow these steps. So in your homework, it says you'll analyze a lot. Okay, I don't really recommend you omit too much. But then as you write, you'll realize that some piece of evidence, you know, are really nice. Like you have some alliteration and it's alliterating for a very important effect, which contributes to the contention. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on that. That's a very juicy piece of analysis. And you realize that some analysis is a bit like just kind of bland. Like, oh, they use the inclusive pronoun we to show that they include the author, uh, readers in their collective action of rising up against the government whatever, which is like a bit of an easier one to analyze, still like solid. And there are some ones that are like a bit worse probably as you go along. Um, and because you have that sort of gauge in your head, you kind of know in your essay, I want to have a couple juicy ones, a couple solid ones. And just so I cover the text, maybe a few like sort of less cool ones, but sort of important ones nonetheless. And you get a better gauge of that as you work through your timed essays. So I think you should first do the homework essay so that you really get an awareness of the spectrum and then when you get your timed essays you'll be able to pick out ones angela how to analyze well if you're not if you're not getting feedback to help you improve 
So in terms of that, what do you mean? As in your teacher's feedback isn't helpful or they're just not giving feedback? Um, in that case, probably look at good sample writing. Um, if you have older students, if you have friends who do well. Probably older students. I feel like friends is a bit iffy. Yeah, probably check with older students and try and get feedback elsewhere. So I actually sent in some of my essays to older students who went to Scotch and studied. Actually, they didn't even study my text, but um, it'd be good if they study your text and they can give some feedback there. Tanjiro, how should you begin an analyzing argument paragraph to make the reader more engaged in your sack? Uh, look, I didn't write it in a way that made it more engaging I for argument analysis because it's kind of just argument analysis. I just did, um, if you watch my... Actually, no, I didn't talk about it yet. But I just did idea plus intended impact in my topic sentence. So idea, what the heck are they trying to do in these couple body paragraphs? And then intended impact. Like, what's the purpose of it? So they aim to illustrate the context of how rubbish has been dumped everywhere to highlight to readers from the outset the severity of the situation. Idea, intended impact. Bianco, did you have a certain schedule that you plan that you do each day for the routine? No, because uh, like I would write down some tasks occasionally I wanted to do, um, but I didn't really have like a, a really detailed schedule. It's honestly what works for you. I found writing a schedule a bit tiring, but if I had like a lot of tasks or some urgent tasks I wanted to do, I'll just write it down. But in my head, I always kind of knew what I wanted to do. So in my head, it's like, okay, I have a sack next week for Latin. So I'm going to probably want to do like an unseen today. And then I sort of see, okay, I don't have anything else to do. Let's do an unseen. So I kind of have an awareness of what's coming up. What am I bad at? And like, keep in mind, you know, when I want to start my preparation as well. But if you like routines, then go for it. Exams are a little harder. I'll get into that in the end of the year because you have so much more time. And honestly, it's a little bit of a blur for me. But yeah, I'll reflect more on it and I'll help you out with that um, towards the end of the year. Or you can message me later. Uh, how do you get help from older students if you're in year 12? Oh, like you just message older students. You should, I don't know if you know older students at your school or people who've done well. Or you can go to VC discussion space and look at people who study your text and just message them. And, and that's what I meant when I said I received feedback. I didn't, like I was in year 12 and I just messaged students who'd graduated but scored highly in English. Angela, when I analyze, for example, okay, I don't think you meant to write that, but st statistics helps improve credibility, positioning the audience to advocate for change as well. I wouldn't know what more else to add to that. Yeah, well, a really good test for analysis, if you think about it, okay, for any piece, and this is something I ask my students a lot, so you can pay attention, you guys are my students as well, is can you use this sentence in another essay? Okay, and Angela, what do you think about that sentence? Could you use it in another essay? And Archer, hello, welcome to the live. I watched part of your uh, video, I look forward to watching the rest of it. And I saw you were at an uh, Apple event as well. I hope that was fun. And yeah, please check out Archer's, uh, Archer's channel as well. Lots of uh, good videos on there. You know, for the creative sectors, there need to be a climax. Like, I, I don't know what the context of your creative sack is. Um, there usually wants to be like a realization or something, perhaps for a good novel. But honestly, just check with your teacher. Creative questions, it's better to be directed to a teacher because they know how it's specifically held in your second exam. All right, Angela, when I analyze, for example, statistics, yeah, like, so similar to my earlier question, your analysis can be used in any piece of ever, right? So for like any argument analysis piece, I can probably just use that, which means it's probably not the best sentence. So you can write, so credibility as what? Who are they? Right? Their credibility as a scientist in the field of climate change, which positions the audience, like which positions the readers or in the hope that readers will advocate or will um, more believe his statements that climate change is a very real issue. So adding in a lot more context and that sentence that I've just said, you literally can't take that and put that into any other piece. Because it just wouldn't make sense. It'd be on a completely different piece. 
So your your idea is good. That is generally the purpose of statistics. But you really want to ensure that it is tied down very, very tightly to the actual piece you receive. Because most people know that statistics are for credibility. And if even better, sometimes statistics are more for, than just credibility. Sometimes they're used for... Actually, you guys think. Well, what else What else do you think statistics are, are used for in, in addition to credibility? Nora's Archer. Oh, I look forward to the vlog. I haven't seen many vlogs from you, so this will be nice. But I've seen some of your Instagram stories, actually, where you talk a bit. Um, I enjoy those. Catherine, on the English rubric, for very high, there's always a session for sophisticated vocabulary. So vocab is something I've talked about a bit. Best way is to learn is... Okay, since we have a bit of time, I'm going to ask you, Bianco, in what step here, so once again, we're referring back to our steps, do you think you can really improve your vocab? Yeah, thanks a lot, Bianco. You as well and everyone else. So Bianca, which step do you think you can work on vocab in here? Oh, anyone else can say as well. And the other question I had for everyone was statistics. Apart from credibility, what else do you think they may be used for? What else do you think you might analyze them for? Which is less, like it won't be for every statistic, but it will be for some of them. Drop it in the chat. I don't mind if you are wrong or have a different opinion to me. Yeah, good, good. You know, good. Bianco, good. So yeah, when you write those, because you have so much time, you just try and fit in... Uh, yeah, sure. You can read the dictionary as well. You might find some unique words. Um, but synonyms is very helpful. I think back when I was quite young, like year seven, year eight, there was like a hippo website, like word hippo or something. Had some decent synonyms. But yeah, so th that would be when you'd be sort of playing around with your language, seeing if it fits, seeing if you're using it correctly. And yeah, you're exactly correct. So that's how you would improve your vocab. So try and find good words, try and place them into your essays. It's best you do it as you write your essay. So reading the dictionary is nice, but... You know, as you write your essay, you're like, okay, I could use this topic as destruction. What are some other ways I can say destruction? And Angela, yes, I am happy to read the draft. Yeah, and with statistics, if no one else knows what it is for credit, like literally you can guess anything. But statistics can also be used to... Statistics can also be used to threaten, right? To like, to, to warn people, to scare people a bit. If I say to you like 99% of teenagers who smoke develop you know, extreme health consequences. Like sure, that's showing I'm credible. Oh, it doesn't really show I'm credible actually because it doesn't fit in with me because I'm, I'm not like a smoking researcher. So that's a place that credibility isn't that important. It might make the piece more credible, shows that I've put in some effort and done some research, but also it was like a bit threatening, right? So you see that that analysis, if I an analyze statistics in that way, it's very, very specific to that specific text that I received. I wouldn't be able to use it in any other text. So be aware of general, so be conscious of general ways of analyzing. Okay, so be aware of like, you know, the general purpose of statistics, the general purpose of inclusive pronouns, but always try and make it specific. Try and think a little differently about the actual example that you have received in your piece. That's a very cool skill to have. And that's also what I mean by like, when people memorize essays, it means they can't do that a bit. So they memorize specific analysis and then try and bring it in. Yeah, pure to fear. Good, Sienna. So Sienna asks, I think learning the text can help you know more vocab, but being able to use them practice essays are probably more useful. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's both. Uh, learning the text there may be some good words in the text but using them in practice essays are more useful yeah because like I've said this is why this structure is so good like hopefully you guys can implement it hopefully you guys will implement it but 
you will find words in your homework essays. And as I said, homework essays will be where you're analyzing your main moments, where you're really taking effort, using your brain power to, an to analyze, find good moments, find good quotes. Okay, so you put a lot of effort in, so you're already going to kind of remember it. And then you're going to consolidate that in your body paragraphs, <coughs> in your timed essays, and it will just be in your DNA almost. And so you wouldn't have to memorize too much, hopefully. Is spending like an hour on homework essays fine? I spent much more than an hour. Like an hour is a timed essay, right? Uh, be mainly because I needed to. I think if you're doing really well in English, you're getting the scores you want, then an hour is fine. But for me, like my homework essays are really, really long. And they took me ages because I'd be looking for moments. I'd be really thinking about my analysis and and yeah, just constructing it very well. Making sure it was really the best I could do before the... Um, for the teacher's feedback. Because when you think about it, you don't write that many pieces before the end of your exam. You don't write that many pieces that receive teacher feedback. So you want to make sure that each one is really, really important. You make the best of each one. Ah, oh, thanks. Thanks, Mel. Excuse me. All right, I think that's about it. I'm not getting too many more questions. So we probably won't go for too much longer. This is a relatively short live. A um, couple reminders. So I am... Google form, please. Oh, actually, I'll pop the Google form. Yeah, the Google form's at the top. So if you guys could fill that out in while any other kind of questions come in, I'd really appreciate it. Just gives me a good idea of like what I can cover, what I can improve on. And also you guys can consolidate what you've learned. So it's been what, an hour? Hour, yeah. So if you write down like what you've learned in the Google form, you'll hopefully remember it in the future. And yeah, try and remember the five steps and... It's a process. It's a flowy process. And also, I will be speaking at this event on the 3rd of May. Okay. If there are no more questions, I'll give it a couple of minutes. But, yeah. So Mildu has asked, when you say you write long practice essays, so let's hop back into that homework essays. Actually, no, we'll go to the... I think you're talking about argument analysis, right? So let's go to argument analysis. When I tried to write long practice essays, do I attempt to analyze every technique? So not every technique, but a lot more than I would do in the SACRA exam. Just all the techniques that I think are cool. Like I could write something on. They're not like completely useless. Whereas in the actual SAC and exam, you have to make very executive decisions about what you include. You have to like cut out some stuff that you might think is quite useful. But in homework, I would try and analyze some some ones. And sometimes there would be language that I think that you might think is you know a bit interesting, but you don't know how to analyze it. Still write it down, still try to analyze it because this isn't assessed. This is for you to develop your analysis. So don't be afraid of that. So I hope that makes sense. Sienna, no worries at all. Thanks for coming. Yeah, no worries, Kanjiro. No worries, Catherine. Okay, I'll probably end it at 9.10 then if I don't receive any more questions. Yeah, I think we'll aim for 9.10. So down the line, when should we start applying to uni? I think you asked me that. Uh, ask your school. I don't know when you should be applying. Definitely not now, I think. But yeah, a bit later in the year. <laughs> ask your school. They're much better informed on this than I am. Thank you, Bianca. And yes, everyone, stay safe. Ari, why did I choose med? A very big variety of reasons. 
Mm. To recap in short. Oh, no, you didn't miss my answer. I, I remember seeing your question. I must have just missed it. Family reasons. Like, I've been to hospitals, not for me personally, but I've, you know, been to hospitals a bit. And I just think it's, it's a very rewarding, like, like place to be. And I feel like it's, it's just a very impactful place to be as well. Um, plus, you know, you have spoken to doctors, done a bit of work experience, and that was nice as well. So yeah, I'd say a variety of reasons. And I like also having a direct pathway. Like in terms of some courses in uni, people might a bit, might be a bit unsure about what they want to do. And so after the course, you'd probably do some other things and whatever. But I like sort of this directness. So I'm in the hospital, you know, I'm two years out from school, but I'm in the hospital doing what I'm going to be doing in like 10 years time or you know eight years time, whatever. So I like that sort of direct approach and I'm really um, cultivating my skills a bit earlier. So that's pretty cool as well. Oh yeah, you know, you asked about my creative essays. I do sell them, so send me a message if you would like. But do keep in mind that you're, you're, even though we're on the same text, I think you were on nine days, it might be a bit different in terms of how it's being held. But yeah, feel free to send me a message on Instagram or YouTube or email. Probably email or Instagram would be better if, yeah, it's sort of like a discussion. Does ATAR become irrelevant? Mm. Like people, like it's just a thing that happened. Like it's sort of like, oh, I play basketball or I did this in the past. And sometimes people might be like, oh, what ATAR did you get? Just as like a, it's like a side thing. It's it's not a massive deal. It's not, it, it's not like taboo. Um, it's just like a thing that happened in high school and people occasionally talk about it when you're perhaps talking about high school or whatever. Maybe med people talk about it a bit more because it's a bit, they're a bit more curious about things like that. Um, but yeah, I guess occasionally people might talk about it. Yep, Annie, it is. I think um, when I was in year 11, I attended some lectures for three, four methods. There was a girl there who who was, was teaching the lectures. I think she scored like 99.9. But she scored a 50 methods. I'm pretty sure she only sat five subjects. So you can score very highly. Um, but I think it's a little easier with the sixth subject. Because even because if you get like a 30 for your sixth subject, that's still adding three to your sort of exam points, to your aggregate points, which is, you know, a decent amount. And... If you're someone who normally gets, you know, 40s for the other subjects, you don't have to put in as much effort to score a 30, so it should be worthwhile. But of course, it's a time balance thing as well, um, and definitely, po <coughs> definitely possible to get a high ATAR with high ATAR with only five subjects. Actually, I think 99.95 is will be very difficult, but um, the other scores are a little easier because, like, logistically. If you do the maths, like you, six subjects, what do you need to score? Yeah, you need to get a 50 for all the subjects. That doesn't sound... Yeah, yeah, you need to sort of average a 50 for all the subjects to to um, score a 9.95 if you do six subjects. So if you do five, it makes it a little harder. Um, Kanjiro, what's the average ATAR? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I think there's a... There's a thing out that says the average ATAR for med applicants each year. I don't remember what that is. Um, but average, I don't think is a great indication because medicine does have people from different backgrounds, different locations, and it varies a little bit with that. All right, any final questions? I'll wait another... Okay, I just got a question. But yeah, any final questions, pop them in, but otherwise I will end the live soon. Lustre, what benefits did you get from scoring highly in VC? Well... I, mm, let's see. Okay, we'll go like tangible, I guess, and intangible. So tangible benefits, I was a much better chance of entering into the course I wanted to. Um, and I received a scholarship and, you know, the photos, whatever, newspaper, all those things. But intangibles, it's something I can look back on, right? It's it's there, it's set in stone, right? In 10 years time, I still scored the ATAR I scored in year 12. 
and it's something I can be proud of and something that I think, you know, I worked hard towards. And I think whenever you're, whenever people are like unhappy or insecure about things, the best way, which is a bit hard in the moment when you're insecure, but the best way is to sort of have little things you can look back on. So for me, like sometimes I might be like, okay, I'll be like, okay, I did this in the past. I can, it was a test of my character then. I will, I can apply myself and I can push myself. I feel like if you haven't done too much in the past, like if you haven't done academically well in the past, it's hard to break out of that. It's hard to say to yourself, well, I can do this. It's sometimes easy for negative talk to happen. So I'd say both tangible and intangible benefits from scoring highly in VC. And yeah, I learned a lot of lessons as well, just about like, you know, high performance, which applies to anything um, and sort of applying myself. And it was just nice learning a lot in each of the subjects as well, like Latin, Spesh, which is pretty cool, cool, um, cool times. Ari, if you're doing five subjects, it seems your fifth subject does not matter much. Well, it depends. I, I don't know how to convert to ATAR points, but it does add points to your like score, which from which your ATAR is calculated. But like 1.9 ATAR points is a good amount. Like if you score 90, if we go very high in the spectrum, like 99 to 1.9, oh, you can't add that actually. 98 plus 1.9, so 99.9. And if you go a bit lower, like 85 to 86.9, sometimes that's a significant difference between, yeah, sometimes that's a you know, important difference. Great. All right. Thank you guys for all your questions then. Um, thanks for joining the live today. Any questions, message me, email me. But otherwise, I will see you guys next time. I'll wait till like... Yeah, otherwise I'll see you guys next time. Uh, enjoy your weeks. And please fill out the Google form if you have time. See ya. Oh, whoops, I've got a question. Okay, I'll answer this question. Gary, I just thought about this question myself, a bit random. But any any, any following questions, just message me. I, I will reply to your messages. But I hope you can answer it. You received a very high ATAR. Why didn't you go to one of the top universities in America? Why did you choose to go to Monash? i answer the second question. It's a little easier. So I went to Monash because it's better for medicine um, because it's shorter. You do the five years and... Like I'm in hospital now and I'm just graduated two years ago. So they get things done a bit quicker here. And generally I feel like people aim, if they want to study medicine, aim for Monash. There may be more you know, nuanced reasons than that, but that's the main reason. And so that was my highest preference and I was accepted, so I went. So why didn't I go to one of the top universities in America? I did contemplate that. There are a couple of reasons, I guess. One, family. I'm pretty close with my family, so I'd like to stay in Melbourne. Two, medicine is not probably not the best to do overseas. Like most of the overseas unis, they do a lot of general stuff. They do like more years of high school. So I have friends in, in the US and like at Harvard and stuff. I think pretty sure everyone does the same, like similar. You just do random subjects for the first like couple of years. So if you know what you want to do, probably not. And particularly medicine might vary a bit between places. It's a bit better in Melbourne. Um, but it is something I seriously considered. And I think would have been cool um, to do, to go into one of the top unis in America. Um, but yeah, I think anywhere you go, you can excel if you apply yourself. Hopefully that answered your question. It was a good question. All right, I will end the stream now then. Thanks for joining and see you guys next time.